Hello viewers, today is a little bit messy in the shop, but we have a lot of happening here. So the main goal of this video is the total disaster of these VAC engines, which are probably the biggest disappointment on VAC group. So this right here is cylinder block from 1.8 liter TCI engine. And actually this cylinder block or yeah, actually the cylinder box itself don't have any issues with them. But the issue with these engines are the pistons and the piston rigs itself. And actually this issue is really often seen on the 2.0 liters engines also. This especially is the engine with the engine code CCDI. So this engine is taken from Škoda Superb second generation. So once again, this is 1.8 petrol engine with turbocharger and it is making 160 horsepower. So the main issue with this engine engines is with the pistons plus the piston rings. Volkswagen is saying in their bulletins that to fix this oil, crazy oil consumption, actually this engine has probably liter or two oil consumption on every 1000 kilometers. So it was kind of bizarre. So that's why we decided to open up the engine and finally fix this issue. And yeah, I promise on the owner that I'm going to do this video because uh, you probably know guys, I'm making videos mainly on BMWs, but uh, because this is actually my cousin, I decided to do this exception and film this video for him. What is the parts that we're going to use? I told him that I'm going to fix this engine like it was on my car. So. That is why I'm going to show you what is the best thing you can do for fixing this issue. So, does matter what you're going to do. If you don't change the piston plus the piston rings, you are not going to fix your oil consumption issue on these engines. If you try to change the valve seals, like this, this is the cylinder head of the engine, which is uh, already rebuilt. Uh, if you change the oil seals on the valves, you are not going to fix your issue, I can guarantee you. If you change the oil separation gases, actually this car has two valves of oil separations. One is on the top of the valve cover and actually on the cylinder head. This car doesn't have, let's say, a valve cover. And the other one is right here, but we are still waiting for it. I don't have it right now in spare to show you, but it's underneath the water pump. So water pump is somewhere here and underneath is the other oil separation gases system valve, I don't know how to call it, but still this is not going to fix your issue. The main issues with these engines is the pistons plus the piston rings. And actually Volkswagen, the VAC group decided to do the brilliant idea uh, to change the pistons with different design and uh, different design of the piston rings, by, but you are not going to be able to change only the pistons. Because let me show you. Let me show you how smart they came with this idea. So I, I took of course uh, aftermarket pistons because uh, the price of the original pistons was some crazy amount of money. So this is a aftermarket piston with the piston rings. This is a Coben Schmidt piston, which is a high quality one. It's not some cheap piston. So originally the diameter of the wrist pin here is 21 millimeters originally. This is what we have removed from the car. But on the newer type of pistons from Volkswagen, from the VAC group, the original ones from the bulletin, it's 23 millimeters, which means if you buy a brand new pistons from Volkswagen, you're going to need to buy a brand new Conrad's for this piston, for, for this wrist pin. So yeah, this kind of sucks guys, that's why we decided to buy aftermarket pistons with piston rings because we can reuse our old cone rods because we're going to maintain the diameter of the wrist pin which is once again 21 millimeters. Thank you Volkswagen, but we are not going to use your methods as usual. So yeah, uh, actually this is the main thing and the main issue of these engines. Yeah, actually in, in this case uh, this is not the issue. I don't remember when, when, uh, where we put the old pistons, but does matter. So we have already reboard the pistons. So th this engine is ready for uh, assembling back together. I'm just going to check the, the gap on the piston rings. I, I want to see are they in spec. 
So we're probably going to remove the, the compression rings and I'm going to install them in the cylinder and going to see what is the, uh, the gap, but uh, pretty much uh, we are ready to start assembling back everything together. And uh, if we we'll take a closer look on the piston, so yeah, let me zoom in a little bit. So, 82.965 uh, So this is the exact, exact diameter of the piston itself Which is measured Which is measured on these two points Here and here And if we take a closer look on the box We're going to see that uh, the diameter of the cylinder should be 83.0.1 so if we take our mat we're going to have a clearance between the piston and the cylinder 0.05 millimeters so this clearance is pretty normal for a engine in this era so yeah we have done this right now the clearance is 0.05 so everything is, is in spec i just decided to show you what tails we're going to change when you're Removing everything from this engine and after that reassembling it back together and actually I just want to say a few words about this design of this engine so it's uh, The biggest plus is that the cylinder block is from cast iron Which means a lot. This means that this engine has a lot of potential and probably is not never going to have issue with this uh, The other thing which I was really amazed is the condition of the main bearings this is the original bearings which the engine was running without any issues and as we can see guys the bearings are looking like a brand new ones which actually I am really amazed because this engine have seen really bad days uh, because my cousin was driving this engine really often with uh, low oil by low oil this engine is, is taking somewhere around 5 liters in total on an oil change and he was driving from time to time with 3 liters inside so 50% less oil and still the bearings are looking like a brand new ones so this means the oil galleries for the bearings are with a really good design I guess actually if we take a closer look on the cone rods itself let me show you once again this is the original bearings on the cone rods and once again as we can see they are they are look fantastic so in really good shape and yeah believe me all of them are looking the same so he is lucky that we are not going to need to change the bearings on the the main bearings and the corner bearings yeah this is the shows for the uh, for the main bearings and uh, something really important you need to change these bolts up here these bolts are not mandatory to be changed but these ones here on, which are installed like that on the top you need to change all of them plus the bolts of the cone rods of course you don't you don't want to forget this uh, the other thing which is a good idea to be changed when you're doing a rebuild is the oil pump of course and here we're changing this camshaft bridge here uh, because the time when you're going to know that it is for a change is uh, when you see this so let me show you come on Hopefully you guys think what I'm showing you. Let me show you how it should look like on the newer camshaft bridge. Just a second. So we have bought a brand new one. And this is how it should look like. As we can see the difference. We have this, uh, I don't remember how this was called on your English language. So yeah. We are changing this bridge. This is Coven Schmidt, it's not OEM, but still it's high quality. Uh, and uh, I have put here all the timing components. And actually, because as I told you, my because my cousin and I'm going to fix his car like I'm fixing my car, the mandatory things are going to be OEM, originally equipped equipped from the manufacturer. So that's why we have bought OEM chain guides oem chains this is all oem the three chains i don't know which one it was but in total we have three chains uh this is yeah this is the tensioner for the oil pump change i believe this is one more uh, chain uh, this is one more timing chain guide this is the bolt for the 
crankshaft pulley. This is once again the original tensioner for, for one of the chains and yeah, this is really important in my opinion to be changed. This is the, just a second guys, this is the crankshaft gear. So we are changing this with a brand new OEM one. And actually the only bearing that it had some wear, it was one of the axial bearings. So let me show you. So this is the both axial bearings of the crankshaft and if we take, yeah, let me zoom in to show you, we can see that we have some scratches of this on this axial bearing, actually on the other one, the other one looks like a brand new one. So that's why I bought just one axial bearing because we had just a few scratches here which actually the car was going to run like this without any issues but the price of this axial bearing is nothing compa compared with the total cost of everything. Yeah, here is the crankshaft. All the journals look fantastic so I don't think we're going to have some issue with the oil supply. So I'm really amazed about this car, about this engine, sorry about how it's capable to maintain su such a good oil supply even with so much abusage by that I mean with so much often oil level. Yeah, the, other, the other thing which is a good idea to be changed is the oil nozzles here. Actually this, these ones are not just oil nozzles, we have some oil regulation here valves in every each of them. So there are four in total for every cylinder and we have bought a four new ones. I'm going to show you after a second. Yeah, here are the camshafts. Once again, they look pretty good without anywhere on the camshaft journals. On the, sorry, on the bearing journals. So really good. This is the hydraulic lifters. This is the other oil separator, which I, I was talking about, which is on the side of the engine, which is a good idea to be changed now. So I am going to change it. I'm still waiting for it to come. Uh, still, we haven't received it. This is the high pressure fuel pump. This is the vacuum pump. And yeah, this is the turbocharger right here. So the water pump is driven by this small belt here from the balance shaft, which is right here. We have in total two balance shafts. This is the other one. So it's driven by this belt here, which we have bought brand new one of course and it came pretty conveniently in this big package for this small belt this is the rear camshaft, uh, crankshaft gear this is the other three pistons and uh, a lot of gaskets and tow rings this is the main cam this is the main bearing bolts which once again I told you is a good idea with good idea and mandatory to be changed this is the flywheel bolts this is the Conrod bolts, all of them, and yeah, we have bought flange for the thermostat, the thermostat itself, and pretty much I have bought everything that you going to want to change when you're doing this. And here is the water pump, which once again is really interesting design, and the thing which probably most of you are not going to change because because it's kind of expensive is this oil pump so this is a brand new original VAC oil pump which I'm going to change just to be sure 100% that this engine is going to last and actually there is some filter or something like that which should be installed underneath the oil pump so if you are doing this don't forget to buy this part here Especially this is really in important in my opinion. So yeah, what else? Just some plastic hoses which can broke down because of the heat. I decided to change them now because it's in the rear of the engine. It's kind of hard to be changed. So yeah, we are doing pretty much all the gaskets we have, which we have removed from the engine. So yeah, I want this engine to be reliable. For probably at least 100 on 150,000 kilometers, I want this engine to last. Because once again, I'm doing it for my cousin, and I promised him that I'm going to do everything in my power so to make this engine reliable. So hopefully, 
we're going to be able to do it and just to show you <coughs> the brand new oil nozzles that has oil pressure regulation in, in every each of them so they are tot four in total so I believe it's mandatory to be changed with OEM ones only so they was they were not so cheap they were probably somewhere around around 100 euros all of them so not so cheap but if you don't want to have some issues it's mandatory to be changed so this piston is 82.9 and the OEM one was if I don't remember wrong it was 82.4 so it's from is 0.5 millimeters smaller than this so if you want to make perfect cylinder for the new piston you're going to want to go with bigger diameter pistons which we have done here so once again actually the piston came with a new wrist pin uh, you're just going to swap your cone rods and this should fix your oil consumption yeah you're going to say you are replacing everything of course you're going to change you're going to fix your oil consumption i'm just making this video to show you that doesn't matter what you're going to do to the accessory of the engine by that all the oil separation the valve seals you are not going to fix this issue without replacing the pistons I forget to record the first start, but uh, I'm just going to show you how it runs. Die. As you can hear, smooth as butter. So, my cousin is driving the car for how long? Uh, roughly roughly 4,400 kilometers. So 4.5 thousand kilometers. 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 Kilometer. Kilometer. Just start with. <laughs> and uh, what is the oil consumption right now after all uh, of we have done? Around 200 milliliters maybe for 4,000 kilometers. Yeah. So probably for 10,000 is going to be roughly half a lit half a liter. Previously, how much was around? How much <laughs> do you remember? Maybe one liter per thousand kilometers. Yeah. <laughs> how much is this drop down? Around, around tw 20 four times? Or? At least 14 times. I didn't. 14, 20, 20 times, right? Maybe. You you put 20, uh, 10 or oh, 10 liters? 10, 10 for Now 10. you're running 0, 0 0.5 liters for so 20 times. 20 times. I'm going to write it down. Uh, Einstein stuff around your head now. <laughs> Uh, so 20 times less oil consumption <laughs> and hopefully it's going to last last forever. <laughs> yeah, it's going to last like that so yeah guys this was all about the biggest failure of Volkswagen engines so if you want to fix your engine you're going to need to change your piston rings your pistons and uh, yeah pretty much this is it and all the gaskets and stuff around it so yeah it wasn't the easiest job but uh, it keeps running and it's going to be reliable, ho we hope so. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video. We'll keep you updated. Subscribe! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>